All right. So uh, sorry to touch on Duo again. Um, however, uh, we have started trying to make sure that uh, on top of having time saves uh, for automation to build Duo tenants for us, um, we want to make sure that uh, for anyone who doesn't know what Duo is, it's a two-factor um, uh, product. At least in this case, it's a two-factor product that um, we give uh, for adding 2FA to sign-ins. Um, in this case, we're making it to where we want to make a we get a new client that uh, we would set up their tenant, um, and we want to make sure that it's set up the same way every single time. Um, so here in this particular workflow, uh, we set it up to where whenever we have a ConnectWise uh, project ticket that gets entered and is put into a certain status, uh, in this case, it's looking for a Duo Roost trigger. Um, so we have this trigger up here that it just sees that a record was saved with a project ticket. Um, but then it looks to see if it is in a roost-duo that tells it, hey, carry out the um, workflow on this particular ticket. It's good to go forward. Um, but then the first thing the workflow does is it checks to see if a duo account already exists for the tenant. Um, if it does, it notates here and says, hey, you'll have to carry out the automation or you'll have to carry out the, the creation manually. But if not, then it'll first thing it'll do is create the account. It'll get the host name, which uh, anyone that's worked with Duo API, um, there's a bunch of different uh, tokens you have to have, but also uh, each tenant has a unique host name. So it pulls all of the unique host names for that tenant. Um, but then it goes through and creates, um, it updates a global policy, but also creates a what we call an SMS policy. Um, and then it creates five uh, standard users that we put on every duo tenant. It creates a phone number for every duo tenant. Um, and then it creates a group. So then after it goes through, creates all these, also creates uh, four applications, a fifth one pending. Um, and these applications tie into our, uh, our on-prem integration. So like uh, this affects how it gets pushed out to their on-prem workstations, their servers. Um, but also uh, there's a little bit of pass portal integration that we use um, down the road, but I, I unfortunately wasn't part of that. So I don't know what all it covers. It just prepares the duo tenant for that deployment. Um, but then it sets the time zone on the tenant but after it goes through and creates all these users, um, the phone, the policies, the groups, uh, it would go through uh, with uh, list items and it adds the phone to all these users that were just created. It adds the group that, to all the users that were just created. And then um, it applies this particular policy to each of these four applications that were created. Um, and this used to take a guy who knew how to do it over and over and over again, uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and this is a guy who did it every day. Um, but then we ended up setting it up to where it goes through, carries all this out on a standard tenant. Now, granted, there's still manual setup that's required after this is done, um, but that's because API doesn't allow it, uh, as well as Microsoft APIs doesn't allow it. Um, but in this case, I have a test tenant set up here. So as you see here, there's no XY uh, company in our duo tenant. Um, I go over to our XYZ testing company. Um, I hit the contact because the um, there was some data I didn't want to show in that. But otherwise, this is a test client. N uh, nothing that you know would be at risk for showing. So here it's looking for that summary multi-factor authentication for devices. Um, it's looking for it being on our projects board, but then I kick it into a Roost Duo status. I save this workflow and it should be kicking off here in the background. And then in a matter of well, it's still running, um, but as you can see, it's going through and it is kicking off that entire um, towards adding all the users, adding all the SMS policies, adding the phones. Um, all right, let's see if it is completed. So what used to take a tech, 
an hour to an hour and a half. Now it takes 22 seconds. Um, and it's done the same way every single time, but then I bring up that ConnectWise ticket, refresh the screen, and we have the Duo 10 at XYZ test company was created. Global policy was updated. ECMSI Teams policy was created. Uh, four different applications were created. A group was created, five different users. Um, then it tells what allowed methods, what blocked methods were allowed for each policy. Um, shows that it applied the uh, group SMS policy or group SMS group to each of the users. Um, and then that it applied the policy to each application and using each group. Uh, and then last, you know, that, hey, it's got the Eastern time zone. Um, but then we have it to where that is automatically putting time against the ticket. Uh, that way we can automatically bill our clients for what would normally take a tech hour, hour and a half. And this is a tech that knows what they're doing. 